Okay, we're ready. Today, today is May 10th. This is a meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee beginning at 11.30 a.m. And I believe that everyone on the committee is here. Um, we could do a roll call. Tori? Hold that. Oh, I wanted to make sure I was unmuted. I'm here. You are. Yeah, okay. Um, Saren? Here. Marty? Here. Ruth? Here. Elise? I'm here. And me, I'm here. And we are still officially down one member, which we have been for almost nine months now. Um, and I'm hopeful that we will have somebody else appointed to this committee at some point, but it doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. Um, or at least it hasn't been a priority. So um, do we have, is Pat DeAngelis here? No, she's not. Not yet, okay. All right, um, let's see. Does anyone have any announcements? Nope. Nope. Unrelated to the committee, it's my husband's birthday. <laughs> uh -huh. Happy birthday. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah, I was just saying tomorrow's my granddaughter's birthday and she has COVID, so she doesn't get oh. to do anything. Okay, so um, I have an, I do have sort of an update. I okay. did participate in the library um, session last- oh, the open house. Yeah. The open house on Sunday. And uh, oh, good. We, had, we had quite a few people come through. Um, it was a really busy, even though our table for universal design was down in the basement, uh, sort of out of the way, but several people found us and uh, had some really good input. So um, it looks pretty what, good. What kind of uh, input were you getting from people? Um, we had some interesting input. We had um, input from several people who have sensory issues. Uh, there was discussion about lighting, about mm -hmm. having sort of quiet space, yes. also dealing with PTSD, um, the request for sort of a nook where you could sit looking out so no one could come behind you. Um, that was most of it. I spent a lot of time talking about um, how the entrances were going to work. Um, I did a lot of sort of teaching about the uh, plan as it is now. Um, if you don't know, the plan is they're gonna take out the, the 1990s edition and they're going to not have a side entrance as the main entrance. They're going to grade the lawn up to the front entrance and have um, a semicircular, it's a, half a circle um, walkway coming from either um, corners of the lot on Amity Street. And so it'll just gradually come up. And then if you're coming directly across from the parking lot, there will be- Which parking lot? The parking lot across the across street, street from Amity, you know, where the um, yeah. theater parking lot um, yeah. Right. Down yeah. 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 So if you come straight up like you do now to the front main front entrance, that will have some stairs there because they have to overcome the couple of foot differential. But at the at the the stairs will be at the street rather than at the entrance. No, they'll actually the stairs will be in the middle of that walkway as it's designed right now because they're going to have to grade that up. Okay. okay. Um, but there won't be a ramp anywhere, which is nice. And then um, on the lower level, there will be a rear main entrance coming from the CVS parking lot, which will be fully accessible. And um, that will have the um, auditorium, the community room, which they're going to basically double in size. It'll hold about 200 people. Oh, good. And it will be, they'll be able to close it off from the rest of the building, but you'll be able to come through the community room to a sort of foyer 
that has accessible restrooms. So it, they can actually use this after hours when the library is closed. So um, it looks really good. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. So, are you are you working on it or, or did you just get involved for this? I mean, are you are you one of the people who's on the committee? Or, well, you're not. No, committee, I'm not on the but, committee, but I've been asked to um, do a couple of things. One is review the plans when they get farther along. And I'll be looking at, you know, all the architectural things because that's what I do. Um, and I've been asked to come in at times to to help them, especially working with the community. Marty, are they going to have auditory enhancing devices? For they haven't gotten who... to that point, but I'm sure they will. OK, yeah, because some um, people so... aren't yeah, deaf. Well, I'm sure they, the community but... room will have that. Right. Marty, uh, um, I have I mean, a question. When you enter mm -hmm. from the CVS, the lower level, will they have elevators that will take you up to the library level oh yeah yeah there'll be full there'll be a you know right now they only have one well they have two elevators um and they're hard the one in the back is really hard to find but um there will be a main elevator and there will they're also keeping the one in the old building so no. then, yes um so i have a question this is tori i have a question so the only accessible entrance is going to be from the CVS parking lot? No, the front, the main front oh. door will be fully accessible. But with stairs. Yeah, but you said there's- No, there won't be stairs. There, no, they're taking be, the steps out and they're, they're making they're a taking circular this, ramp. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm cool. confused. Well, uh, I'm one at a time. So let's have Marty um, respond to Tori's Let me question. Try and explain this again, because I don't have a graphic. It would be easy to show you. So basically they're going to get rid of the steps at the front entrance but okay. they're going to grade the the landscape up to that entrance That's so there will be two walkways that are fully accessible and then the straight walkway that goes to amity street from the door to amity street has to have steps in it because there's it's just too steep so, so if we're he hearing you correctly, they'll for the front entrance along Amity, there'll be two ways to enter the building, one via uh, a walkway with steps and one with a walkway that is doesn't require steps. Yeah, and, there's and two that walkways one. that don't require steps. Oh, okay. Because it's a circle. It's a half a circle going okay. from the lot corners on Amity Street. Okay. Okay. So are they keeping the driveway with the few handicapped parking spaces on the side? I believe they are. That okay. hasn't been fully developed yet, but I think so. They're not messing with that driveway. Okay. What They're just getting the, rid of that ramp. What happens to the, uh, wall, uh, the ramp right now, which takes you through the side door? Are they eliminating? That's going that? away. Because the code requires that all entrances and exits be accessible. And so there's only going to be two entrances and, and exits, one in the back and one in the front. Okay. So nobody will go in through the side. That's actually going to become a loading dock. Oh. So connected to Tori's question, if they're going to keep the driveway, um, with the accessible spaces, but they're going to do away with the door that's there. How are people going to use those accessible spaces to get to the front door? You go to Amity Street and then take the um, take the new walkway. So you go back, you go down the driveway to the place where the circular driveway starts. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So the okay. distance is going to be much longer as compared to what it is right now? I don't think so not because really. the ramp is quite long. Yeah, the not ramp really. Because to get on the ramp, you have to do that. Yeah. You have right. To get onto the ramp, you have to go to Amity Street and then go. This is, this is still in schematics. It's not 
I, this isn't set in stone yet. And it won't be probably for another year. We've got a lot of design to go through. So, but right now that's the plan. Subject to change, obviously. So oh, that's a cool solution. Yeah. Is the historical commission or whatever it is, uh, historical, whatever the law says you have to have, going to allow that change to the entrance? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's it's really not impacting anything. And they're going to have to replace the entrance door because the entrance door is way too heavy. Very yeah. heavy. And yeah. so, and it needs to yeah. be replaced. It's in really tough shape. The automatic door is terrible. Yeah. It, it, go, it punches in and I mean, it, it swings out. Well, that's what it, it's supposed to do. It has to swing out. I know, but there's no room to walk in really. It's yeah, it's they're gonna they're gonna fiddle with that. Yeah. I think it'll be much nicer and it will work. That'd be great. The architect that they've got is very, very good. Cool. Fine Gold <laughs> Alexander um, has been involved in the state house for the last probably 15 years, and they've done some really nice work. Good. So, so I've Marty, seen some gonna, of their work. Are they going to have an electric um, thing that you can press to get into the main door? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK. All It'll right. be, it, the main doors will be um, have openers on them. Right. Good. I mean, so, yeah, because that door, yeah, like you said, is very heavy, very yeah. heavy. So mm. in the interest of time, and this isn't an agenda item, but it should be periodically over the next time. So Marty, can you sort of keep us apprised of when you think we should be discussing something that's coming up that you've been made aware of? It's possibly uh, if, too early. It's too early. But if I, yeah. if I am, you know, if, if they bring me in for something, yes, I'll definitely report on it. No, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Buddy. Thank you. And yeah, thanks for doing that. And it oh, sounds yeah. like, it sounds like it'll be yeah. And I'm I'm suspect you're having some fun. So yes. <laughs> no, we had a really great time. <laughs> that's cool. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, any other announcements? I have one that's unrelated to the committee, but it's disability related. There, we're okay. having a skin protection and seat mapping virtual workshop at Stavros on May 25th. So skin protection and what? Skin protection and seat mapping. It's for people who use wheelchairs and mobility devices long-term who sit frequently. Um, seat mapping is a, is a, it's a mat that you sit on that will um, calculate where you could potentially get, get pressure source. Oh, wow. So, and um, then what do, do they have things you can do to mitigate that before they happen? Yes, you would work with a uh, physical therapist. And how can someone, uh, and did you say it will be via Zoom? via Zoom and they would sign up by contacting me at Stavros and that would be tdixon at stavros.org is okay. the easiest way to go about that. Um, and do they, uh, I'm on their website. Um, um, it's probably not posted there. It's on our social media. We get, oh, okay. more, hits. We get more hits on our social media <laughs> sure. than we do on our website. So, um, but. So can I ask how they do seat mapping over Zoom? Oh no, <laughs> you don't. You just learn about what it is and you learn about oh. where you can go to <laughs> request one. So, I got it, okay. I don't okay. wanna take like, any more time, but I can I explain to anybody who wants to know at, um, after the meeting. <laughs> Yeah, okay, and if you have any sort of flyer I do. or email um, that, that explains this, could you send that to me and then I can forward it to everyone? Sure, I can um, share that. Thank you. Sure. That's great. Um, okay, um, we can get to, is, is there anyone here for public comment? No. 
You see anyone, Maury? Um, oh, t uh, it looks like Tracy's here. Um, okay. Allowed to speak. Okay. Hi, Tracy. Tracy you if you could state speak? your name and your address. Oh, okay. Oh, hi, I'm Tracy Zafian. I live on Blue Hills Road. Um, I actually don't have any public comment. I just wanted to let you know I'm here. <laughs> so okay, I do I do have some comments on some of your other items, maybe, but I'll listen in. Okay. okay. All right. So the first item um, is about Pomeroy Village. And after our last meeting the next day, I happened to have gone to a presentation um by the massachusetts commission for the blind and one of the speakers was the new director of orientation and mobility allison bill bull and i listened to her and i thought you know what she sounds good so at the very end she said you can contact me at and she gave a phone number and i immediately dialed it and within 30 seconds she you know of the end of the presentation we were talking and I told her about Pomeroy and I asked her if she would be willing to contribute her expertise um, just to look at the plan. And she said she'd be happy to. So I sent her the plans and I sent it to Maureen and then she and Maureen got together. Um, and so she gave some useful feedback. Um, mostly the feedback was that they did a good job and that she had some ideas to make sure that the finishing touches worked well. And so Maureen, you can talk about that, but it seems like they had to do with the duration of the um, rapid flashing beacons, depending on how long the segment is that gets crossed. And also about uh, one thing I had brought up, which is what they will say when you press the button. Like yeah. you have to say what street is being crossed. Yes. Um, so um, Christine, uh, our planning director, Christine Brestrup and I met with uh, Allison Bull, Allison with an S, I um, <laughs> misspelled her name. And it was a really nice conversation um, with Allison and she provided uh, good recommendations. Um, and she thought the project overall was really good and well thought out. Um, and um, uh, we showed her how um, some of the, they're called rectangular, rectangular rapid flashing beacons. Uh, we'll call them flashing beacons for short. So uh, the, um, each um, of the ones located around the, uh, at the roundabout and then just north of the roundabout in front of sort of Mission Cantina where there's a, a, another a proposed crosswalk. Those be beacons, um, are slightly uh, located at different spots, and and um, they're within ten feet of the of the road. But uh, and that is the maximum that it's allowed to be. It can be no further than ten feet. Um, but they um, some of them are you know five feet away. Some of them are ten feet away. Some of them are seven feet away. And she um, she was fine with that having sort of sort of. Uh, these different um, distances and and they are due to physical constraints um, and things of that nature of why there is sort of this um, different uh, locations but she uh, suggested that the time length for the audible messaging and for, and for the flashing component uh, when the buttons pressed to cross the street that the 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 length that the audible audible messaging and the flashing should, account for the distance from where the where you press the button from one side of the road to the button on the opposite side of the road and so that means that each crosswalk each uh distance or each sort of uh, length of the audible and the flashing could uh, be different for each of them so it, it should be dependent on the on that distance. And then also it should be at a speed uh, for um, a length that is reasonable for someone to, you know, slowly cross the street, not speed walk across the street. Um, and so those are two important factors to consider. And then she suggested that the audible messaging could state something like uh, lights are flashing. It is now safe to cross. Uh, West Pomeroy Road, for instance, and each audible messaging should reflect the correct street name being crossed, and that the volume of the audible mm -hmm. messaging for each of the beacons should account for the surrounding noises and should be easily heard by pedestrians at each 
respective flashing beacon. And um, during times that the flashing beacons are not activated for crossing, they should make a beeping noise approximately every 30 seconds, which will serve as a wayfinding tool to help pedestrians locate the respective flashing beacon. And then the volume of the beeping noise that would go off every 30 seconds should also account for the surrounding noises and be easily heard by pedestrians at each of those um, locations. I like this woman. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. And, and so, um, you know, I shared this with uh, numerous people, town manager, the town council, uh, the DPW superintendent, the assistant town manager, and uh, the planning director. And, you know, uh, so Guilford Mooring responded back to me saying, this is how he implied that this is the standards that that what she described are the standards that they are uh, going to comply with. Um, it, it just wasn't articulated by um, by DPW staff. And so maybe that's, um, you know, this is, you know, creating conversations and connections of, you know, between this committee and DPW. So perhaps maybe moving forward, it would be helpful for, you know, staff to clarify these components that are really important for everyone to understand. Um, and, um, and also uh, Allison again was so nice. And she said that, you know, you know, I was like, oh, this was so great meeting you and, and discussing this with you, would you mind if, you know, in the future, if we have any questions about this project or other projects or initiatives, could we use you as a resource? And she said, yes, absolutely. So um, it sounds like we have a good contact with her. And she is, what is her official title? The Director of she, Orientation or um, Mobility. Yep, with the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind. Right. So, And yeah. as such, she can't charge us anything. Oh, there you go. Didn't even fun. think of that one. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's in many ways why I called her because Guilford at the last meeting said he didn't have any money and he hadn't yeah. contacted a consultant and that he wasn't going to. And <laughs> so that's why I called her. Um, because but, I knew she couldn't charge us. Um, and I, I didn't know anything about her before I heard her, but she made a lot of sense. I and like she her. Talked about, yeah, I liked her a lot. And she was, you know, um, she was very kind and she, it was very nice of her to do it. And um, I don't know how many communities ask her and I don't know what would she would do if a lot of them did, but um, <coughs> we got lucky. So I think, it was, I think it was really good. And now we know that we can ask her in the future until we know that we can depend on DPW um, to <laughs> actually follow through and do what we ask. Um, it's really good to have somebody like her. And so I'm really, I'm very grateful to her. And I wrote her a note and you, you all got the note, I think. Um, did, did you get the? Mm -hmm. did, yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you copied everyone else. You copied and why me. Why did you copy the whole committee? Yeah, I, I, I saw your morning. note. Yeah, yeah that was I, really nice. Um, um, and then she responded to, and she was like, oh yeah. And she said uh, like, oh yeah, if you ever have questions in the future, feel free to contact me. Mm, right. Nice. So, so we'll say, oh, well, great. you did say that in the email. So we're contacting you. <laughs> thank you, Myra, for um, making the town link with that person. Well, yeah, thank I got very lucky. helpful. I got lucky because she was there and I called yeah. and she answered the phone. I mean, there was a lot of luck involved in it. Yeah, um, <laughs> but you know, sometimes you take advantage of your opportunities and they work out. Yes, yes. Right. So it sure um, did. Thank you. you know, and it was, you know, the, what's good is that essentially they did do a good uh, design, and you know that's what I said at the last meeting that it's very possible that whoever we get could say that this is an incredibly good design, but before we implement it, we need to have somebody yeah. with real expertise look at it. That's right. And that's what oh. happened. So that's great. Yeah. And, you know, I wish we had been able to do that with other yeah. projects, but maybe now that he's planning other roundabouts, yes, um, 
that this would be, um, you know, this is a, this is basically uh, information about how it has to be done. So in many ways, I feel like this committee did achieve something with this. Um, I mean, I think we, I think, I think by being involved in it, it's as good as it can be. Maybe she could even look at it, review the Triangle Street roundabout because there's lots of pedestrian crossing issues there. Well, if they're ever going to be able to put any, they didn't wire it. I mean, they'd have to rip it up. They, they did not put conduit under it so that we could put any, you know, we could get any uh, RRFPs there. And maybe that's a good segue to um, the next item on the agenda, which is about an uh, update about the... Um, about East Pleasant Street. Yeah. Triangle. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, last we heard, they were going to put the sidewalk from uh, Garcia's to Kendrick Park um, because right. they could not build it the way it was originally designed because the town didn't own the land and because there was electric utility poles and stuff, which would have been way too complicated to achieve for the money and the time that we had to do it. But apparently there's an update. Yeah, so we ran out of time last at the last meeting. So um, I believe so I believe Ben Breger had provided an update that they are putting in a crosswalk um, where the Garcia's restaurant is located on along East Pleasant Street. And that's where Pertucci's used to be located. And that would cross East Pleasant Street to connect over to Kendrick Park. Um, and so what the new information is, is that the, um, the flash, the rectangular rapid flashing beacons um, are now being proposed uh, where they are building a crosswalk at each end of Prey Street. So Prey Street connecting over to Kendrick Park, there's a crosswalk uh, being built there that will include uh, those flashing beacons that will be audible. And then at the other end of Prey Street where it connects back to, um, crosses over Triangle Street. I thought they said they could not build a crosswalk there. Uh, well, uh, no, uh, let's put it this way, not. actually. So they're bu they're building a crosswalk at the corner of Prey and East Pleasant Street, and they're maintaining the existing crosswalk right. at uh, at Prey and Triangle, and they um, are going to locate um, audible flashing beacons there. And so, um, so in in some ways there there are ways to avoid the roundabout at Triangle Street. Um, if someone from you know, the Cottage Street neighborhood wants to go to downtown, they could cross over at Triangle and pray with the audible beacons, walk along pr the Prey Street sidewalk. There isn't one though. There isn't what? There's a sidewalk on, well, if you can see it, there's a sidewalk on the left side of the street, which really doesn't help you get to the other place. There's no sidewalk on the right side. That was the issue. There's no sidewalk that really goes around. Um, that that it, there's a lot of parking lots and stuff like that. So it's still not. Um, it's still not. It's not complete, but it's a good start. Given that they weren't going to do anything, um, mm -hmm. it's a good start. Yeah, and I, I think it was in response of this committee. So. It, so it is a good start um, of, you know, people are listening to the comments um, provided by this committee. So that's something to feel proud of. Um, Tracy has been raising her hand. Um, okay. Myra, did you want to entertain yep. uh, comments from the public? Sure. I think that we should. I, they let me talk at their meeting. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Hi. Am I unmuted now? Uh, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, great. Um, I actually had a comment, just a quick comment about the, the Pomeroy Village, but um, but okay. with the um, but I'll, I'll comment just on the and I had raised my hands earlier. I know it's hard to see the public when you're in a meeting, um, but with the it's great to hear that this Triangle Street improvement is going to happen at Prey Street and Cottage. Um, I I do I mean I it's really great to see and I'm glad that that got resurrected. Uh, 
I did have some concerns, and this is just some more general concerns that there is like one of the corners of that intersection that does have a utility pole like right in the middle of the sidewalk, um, which is never ideal. And so I do have some more like general concerns about that. Um, and I had, I had emailed Myra about it um, and CC Maureen just as the as a council are having poll hearings and things just like can we try not to do that because it creates problems later. Um, on the Pomeroy Village, um, so I thought that that memo, like the feedback from Allison was awesome. The only thing I was thinking about, and I guess it would apply to other rectangular rapid flashing beacons too, like I like all the wayfinding with the sounds and so on, but I was I was wondering and maybe the technology just isn't there um, to have, if you could have any sensors about when a pedestrian is present, because like, for example, if the beeping is going to be like every 30 seconds, like all day long, that is a lot of beeping. Um, and I I know I have uh, was working on a downtown project in Millbury and they had they had a um, flashing, they had a crossing like right next to a senior housing project. So like if you open the windows, you were right next to it and you could hear the audible signals all day, which is great. But at the same time, you could see like if people are opening their windows that it's sort of an issue and mm -hmm. so um if there is a way i mean not to you know if to make it like certain times a day but even better would be if there is a some kind of sensor you can have like when there's a pedestrian or something maybe certain times a day or when there's a pedestrian just so it's not beeping constantly and i guess related to that just i know that your committees looked at just the maintenance of all those audible signals um mm -hmm. and so just to make sure that those are maintained because mm -hmm. the idea of having those really informative signal sounds great like in terms of telling you which street you're crossing and everything but i would hate if those fell into disrepair and then right. not used so thanks that was it thank you i do have a few comments about the shoveling too oh when you get to that maybe i'll raise my hand again okay um anybody have any more comments about cottage street yeah. oh i have a question what about that piece of sidewalk that ha that doesn't exist. Are, is that part of the plan to? It is. It? Uh, if you're talking about along Triangle along Street, along the south side of Triangle Street. Yes. So that yeah. there's, uh, for whatever reason, there's a gap of the, in the sidewalk, um, and that's going to be f uh, filled in, um, and so that will be a, a uh, you know a complete connection along Triangle Street, cool. and that will be part of the MO uh, Mass DOT Shared Street Grant. Cool. All right. Excellent. Thank you. And it is good oh. that we got something, we got them to do something with that, which is great. So they said they had five sets of those. They hadn't assigned them. So obviously two of them are at the ends of Prey Street. One of them is at Garcia, that one, to Kendrick Park. Where are they putting the other two sets? I'm not exactly sure. I think maybe they're looking into um, locations. Okay. Because remember, they had five sets and they hadn't assigned them. Mm -hmm. But it would be all in that general area. I'm not sure. But that is a good question. Where will the other? Um, so there's one, two, three, four. Uh, so is there how many more sets are left? Three sets? Maybe they were plant two. Maybe they were planning to put something in the roundabout. I don't know. Uh, no, I know. They because. I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, Tracy um, raised her so hand. Originally, yeah. when Ben Breger had presented it, they were going to have one on the right in the roundabout. So there were actually, even before they built the roundabout, there's these little stanchion there that they had set up to put electric conduit if they ever did for a signal. Um, but I remember when Ben originally presented it, they were talking about flashing yellow arrows just from the the corner of the triangle, the corner of East Pleasant and Triangle, like the corner where the big building is right there. And that having the rapid rectangular flashing beacon just go like halfway through the, in like across the intersection toward Kendrick and not the whole thing. And I remember contacting planning at the time and just suggesting, like, if you're going to have people push the button, you want to make sure that the flashing is like across the all the lanes, not just some I remember, lanes. I remember. Yeah. That, so, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I I wouldn't be surprised if they put some like right in the intersection in the roundabout. Yeah. 
Oh, here's a good story so, for you. Yesterday, um, so, the van driver told me, you know, the one in Northampton at 91 and Route 9, that roundabout that they put in? Mm -hmm. Yes. The van driver told me that on three separate occasions, he has been in the roundabout and somebody made a left turn off of Damon Road going the wrong way in the <laughs> roundabout. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Three times he's seen it. Oh, my God. But can you say that one more time? <laughs> it's a two lane roundabout. And as he was going through it, there was somebody coming off of Damon Road and going the wrong way in the roundabout, thinking they could get over the bridge by going mm -hmm. left. Oh, wow. That's how it used to be before when That's the traffic right. lights were there. Yeah. Oh, That's wow. That's right. And yeah. I said, oh, my God. How many people are going to get killed there before they figure this out? Yeah. I would hope so, that that is a rarity. Yeah, um, this, three this times. I've seen it three times. They drive a lot. Signals? You know? That was, I'm sorry, what was the question? Like signs or something. You would think. You I mean, know, it's like, not our problem. It's not the purview of this committee, but it's somehow people don't understand. These roundabouts are one lane, so they're a little bit different. Um, yeah. Maybe they're not as inviting to go the wrong way. I don't know. They're much but, safer. Yeah. If you can hear me. Yeah. But did you yeah. also hear about how there was a tractor trailer that was on the bike path there? Mm -hmm. like it took a wrong turn and went on the bike path and it didn't oh think God. and then it got to uh the end of the street whatever that street's called and it was trying to turn that super sharp left on Bates street to go to the industrial park oh and, no. uh, and it was stuck but how it even got down the bike path i have no idea this oh is God. all caused by by gps you're talking about right there um as you cross over the bridge yeah, there's yeah. a bike path, and the for whatever reason, a a, 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 a eighteen wheeler uh, <laughs> decided to take the turn onto the bike path, thinking that that was a road. Um, it has paid there me. are actually so there are apps. Uh, more information than you need to know, but like um, a lot of professional truck drivers have, you know, we have we as just you know individuals, you know, driving just personal cars can use, you know, GPS, Google Maps, Waze, all kinds of driving apps. Professional truck drivers um, can get truck specific GPS um, equipment. And I don't think some do. And that's when you see these instances of, um, what is it, the, the, the uh, truck eating bridge yeah. in Northampton where oh, yeah. truck drivers yeah. go under the bridge and they get stuck and right. um, clearly they're not using the app the their GP, the GPS system specifically for truck drivers it happens at Starro Drive in Boston too yes, it says it if you're, in that tunnel if your yep. truck is higher than this don't use this <laughs> yeah it happens on Southeast Street all the time yeah <laughs> Well, it's, it's providing a lot of good uh, income for cities. That's one way to think of it. It's like, how, what is the fee for 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 every time that happens? Bridge? No, but that's is it problem. less than it's repairing the bridge? Who knows? I don't yeah. know. There's a pedestrian crossway there right where right. you get on Damon Road. So if they're in the wrong lane, you know, if there's a tractor trailer on that on that street trying to get onto Damon Road to get over to Industrial Park, there's a crosswalk there too. So, um, you know, for people who have to get across with their bikes or whatever. So it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, I was, uh, I was sort of astonished, you know, astonished anyway. Okay. So let's get back Mark, to, um, the, so the I, next. Can yeah. I just add something? And I didn't think of it when we were doing announcements because we started talking about sidewalks and, um, I know this project is not finished, um, but uh, we went for a oh, walk on Mother's Day and I'm not too far from the new dog uh, walking park that is going up yep. where the old landfill was. Mm -hmm. And yep. they really need to put, um, they need to color 
they need to put some contrast on the sidewalk now. So they have, and I don't know why it isn't just sloped all the way down. There's, there's a curb. Um, there's an area that is like a, a large curb cut type thing. And then right next to it, there's um, a curb. And so I and my scooter noticed it before I went over it, but my husband thought he had cleared it and he hadn't, and he tipped over in his wheelchair. Oh, wow. And so they really need to paint, uh, put some yellow paint or something. Over uh, what? Uh, over the over the, the curb? Over the curb. Um, where because there's the curb and then there's that large curb it's just a slope it's like a a ramp built into the asphalt and the concrete it's an oversized curb cut if you will um but for some reason they decided to put a curb next to it um it's just part of the sidewalk there's a step up or a step down and my husband actually fell off of it. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, I will um, let staff know um, your about your comments and that your husband tipped over the curb and to see if they um, if they're planning, were they planning to do that? And they haven't they haven't just gotten to it yet or if they, sure could. they haven't gotten to it. But I just said something needs to be put there, whether sure. it's owned or something so um sure. just, and 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 when it's finished i don't even know why it's there they could have just uh ramped the whole thing i'm not sure what the reasoning is hmm. but um yeah there's an accident waiting to happen uh it already did happen he yeah did not get did. Hurt. well he didn't get hurt luckily so Good. Well, thanks for letting um, us know. I, I I will let staff Good. know that. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Amity Street. Yes. They're so, doing sidewalks. Yeah, they're doing sidewalks. Um, yeah, I I um, and I believe that was one of the suggestions from this committee was yep, to yep. yes. So that's really great to hear. And so. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at a map because I want to be okay, correct yeah, of yeah. like, uh, they're doing both the north and south side of Amity Street between North Pleasant, North Prospect Street, and I want to say in Sunset Ave, or maybe it's Lincoln Ave. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't write down the extent. It, I think it is from Sunset to North Prospect. Maureen, it starts at Lincoln. Oh, it starts at Lincoln. And yeah, because it... after that, there's a slope. They're, like the slope right. gets really steep and they couldn't do the work there. Okay, so it's between Lincoln and North Prospect. And they're doing- And that North Pleasant, Pleasant Street. North okay, Pleasant. I was going to say- It's going all the way. But you're right, it's yeah. mainly going to be like till Prospect because from Prospect on, it's improved already. But they are they are improving perfect. some on the north side of North Prospect too. So is it um, anywhere towards Dana, as you walk down towards Dana Street? Um, oh. Let me look at my those... map. Those so are bad too. That's uh, what they're they're not even, they're not fixing those contract, because of the slope. Yeah. They're not fixing anything there because they've said it's too hard with the slope. So what that that's dangerous there. What's is anything going to happen, or is it up to the homeowners? Well, they're not they're not fixing it this year. Um, I agree. Or okay. at this moment, so um, you know that's something that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure the town will consider fixing in the future, and um, and you know, this committee can make a recommendation to um, fix that section of the sidewalk in the future. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I I'm know, just picture. At least you go down that street all the time because your parents live on Dana. Yeah, correct? I to get to they live on Dana Street, and I walk down there at least once a week, sometimes twice, and you know uh yeah <laughs> it's dangerous <laughs> it's a little treacherous um so that's that's my curiosity but i'm just trying to picture like how far down they're going 
with the side. I'm glad they're starting. It's uh, they stop where um, the hill sort of descends down. Okay. Well, it's a start. That's great. It's a start. That's the theme yeah. of today. It's I'm a start. I, um, I and the, car and the curb Taylor cuts are really too. the curb cuts are really nice. Okay. Like, I mean, they're still working. They've done the north side of the intersections, mm -hmm. the two corners, and now they're working on the south. The new okay. path is really wide and it doesn't have any, you know, roots or anything. Um, oh, good. So the, yeah, the north side is done and they're working on the okay. south. And then new curb cuts are, like, it's all beautiful. And actually okay. I've asked Guilford at the last TAC meeting last week, I asked him about, because the Lincoln Amity intersection is a place where there's a number of crashes, um, mm. just because particularly if you're crossing the street at Amity, the street's mm -hmm. really wide and it's not that well lit. Like I walk that way a lot at night. Um, and mm -hmm. he said that they may eventually put a rectangular rapid flashing beacon crossing in there, but there really right. needs to be something done because it's not that yeah. safe right now. Even, you know, with the nice new sidewalks, it won't be any safer until they do something. Yeah, as somebody who uses a cane and a guide dog, you know, it's important to have smooth surface when you can get it. Well, have mm -hmm. you seen this? At least have you tried the new surface on the north side yet? I haven't because I saw the construction going on, but I intend sometime this week I am going to go down and look at it. Yeah, yeah. so the south is still in progress and the okay. south side. And one thing I don't like is that they don't really, they just say sidewalk closed. They don't really give pedestrians anywhere to go. <laughs> we'll yeah, I did, and, I, did, um, I did notice that. And so, um, I mean, they really, yeah, it's not great. You end up walking in the street or whatever. So yeah, oh, I'm not a fan. Still, because they're still working on it, they closed it? Well, there should be, there should be a accessible route yeah. during construction. Um, yeah, I can't walk to my folks' house because um, I use that side of the street. Too. Well, uh, so now... When you're ready, you could um, walk along the north side and then connect back over. Um, then you have you to cross Amity Street and there's no light, so it's not so yeah. safe. It's not great. Um, and there are places where there's it, no sidewalk. you know when to cross. But if you don't have a light on that street, it's not okay to cross it. No. So yes. at, the, at, the, at the Lincoln, at, the, at that intersection, the Lincoln intersection, I mean, yesterday, like they, they have all the metal forms, like where they're gonna be filling in the sidewalk, but it's all just the, none of it's filled in yet or anything. Mm -hmm. So you really can't walk that way yet, unfortunately. So it'll be open, it'll all be open eventually when it's done. Yeah, it looks like it'll probably be done and I don't know, uh, probably by the end of this month. Um, I think we'd... they're talking about working, didn't they send out something that they're all gonna be working on that street for 10 hours a day until UMass graduation um, to be done with it and before the commencement. That's When's route, commencement? That's for Route 9. Commencement is on Friday. Oh, it's Route 9. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, universe, yeah. and University oh, Drive oh, oh. and Rocky Hill Road, they're all closed on Friday. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. well, I see they're also going to repair, it says Taylor Street um, is one of their projects. I don't know. Do you have any idea, Maureen, where they're doing it? Because pretty much most of the length of Taylor Street has fallen apart. Um, Taylor Street, I'm sorry. Um, that's one of the projects that they listed that they're gonna do. I... But be pretty much between High and Newell Court. Yeah, I'm not sure when really they're, um, I don't know when they're starting the Taylor Street uh, roadway improvement. Well, I can, yeah, I can. Well, no, it's not that. a road, it's only a sidewalk. They don't need to do the road. That's one of the roads they did. Of years a few years ago and and but, you're saying that they're planning to yeah it said it said they were going to do it oh, okay the, yeah i could reach town, out to dpw it doesn't say where but anyway that it, it's pretty much falling apart okay mm -hmm. um let's go on to Great. um the berkshire eagle the snowing uh, um unfortunately you can't get the article anymore was it i saved it as a pdf it? no good i couldn't get it uh, I'll, I mean, I'll have to email it to you. Um, All right. But anyway, I think the point is that we have to figure out, um, I mean, there were people who were complaining about calling the police to, you know, have them get in touch with people who aren't maintaining their sidewalks and that that's problematic for a lot of people. And, you know, the whole, the whole process of how to make a complaint probably needs to be reviewed. Um, and then 
you know, are there going to be, you know, stiffer fines? So I guess the question is what, what, you know, I, I, do you have a presentation of any kind? No, no. Um, okay. I, I mean, I don't know what people think we should do. Tracy, do you have? Yeah. Um, I was just going to comment. So, um, at okay. the Jones library open house, I had the privilege of meeting Earl Miller. You know, he's going to be the new director of Cress. Um, Cress, of course, doesn't have any staff right now except for him. But I was one of the people who didn't really feel comfortable when I was told that I needed to call the police, like if I was concerned about a sidewalk that wasn't shoveled or if there were cars blocking the sidewalk and so on. So I actually, so he told me, I mean, he gave me his card and he said, just contact me anytime about any of these like quality of life type issues that you don't want to call the police dispatch line for. And I actually contacted him yesterday because there's this one rental property on Route 9 that they were, they were parked blocking the sidewalk. And it turned out, and I sent him a picture and it turned out that that same property I've complained about before, like one time when there was a snowstorm, they actually parked um, parallel to the sidewalk, like blocking the whole sidewalk. Like in this case, the yesterday they were just like back end, their back end was just out in the way, but I've complained about, and then they also, I mean, one of the things with some of these rentals is they have so many cars that are parking with the students and the driveways aren't that big. Yep. So this, this, they also tend to park in this particular property, they tend to park a lot of cars on the lawn and sometimes very, very close to the sidewalk and so on. So I contacted um, Earl Miller yesterday and because he said, well, these are the kind of things that he thought Crest could handle, you know, even though they're also looking at the bigger issues like mental health calls and things like that. And uh, he was going to follow up. So we'll see how that goes. But currently what I was told last year was to contact the police, but then there's really no place on the I mean, just to call because there's, there's no information about how to report that on the town website or on the police department website. So, right. and, and then my main concern is, I mean, I don't really, I mean, fines are okay, but I mean, I really just want the sidewalk clear and I want it to be accessible like that. And the education about why that matters, like that to me is the most important thing. Agreed. And I don't really know that fines achieve that. And, no. and, it, and in that model, that Berkshire, the Pittsfield model, like if you just increase fines, I mean, maybe there's reasons that people haven't done the sidewalk. You know, maybe somebody's sick or we don't even know. So I'd rather not be punitive and just get people to do it. <laughs> I just, maybe I'm too optimistic, but. Mm. Anybody have any words of wisdom? No. But, but anyway, I can tell people Earl Miller's contact info because he said, go ahead, call him. So, right. Well, to continue with the theme, that's a start. So, um, you know, I can give everyone um, Earl's um, contact information. Um, That'd be great. If, if, if you have a complaint um, with the town, I guess it could be anything. I mean, I think his services are really geared towards public health, um, mm -hmm. including mental health. Um, but, you know, if there's, you know, a complaint regarding sidewalks that you don't feel comfortable contacting the police about, um, he's, he's really super friendly. Um, so he would mm -hmm. be a great person to, um, reach out to by email or telephone. Um, but is, I guess I would like to um, loop back with staff about that because um, we don't want to, he is just one person handling every single sort of phone call right now. So we don't want to overwhelm him. And he's not an uh, ombudsman. That's the thing. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, he could um, easily be used as one, but he's yeah. not. An what so, is his title again? He's uh, the Crest Director. Um, Can you tell us what CRESS exactly stands for? I knew you were going to say that. Uh, hold on, give me a moment. It, it's Community Responders for Equity, Safety, and Service. Mm -hmm. oh. And actually, I mean, the staff at CRESS and he too, I mean, I agree with Maureen that they're, currently there's only him, but right, they're going to be hiring people and that they do really, it sounds like they really do welcome those other types of calls too. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that the mental health calls and those issues would like occupy all of their time. So, no. I mean, obviously they're not as high priority, but I mean, if they. It they, sounds they like it would be part of his. I am reading his, so I'm on the Crest website 
Um, the reason for creating this department is to provide community safety services in situations that don't involve violence or serious crime, is to create a civilian unarmed alternative to calls that might otherwise require a response from the police department. The purpose is to ensure that any public safety response is anti-racist, equitable, just, and fair, and that we offer preventative services to get at the root of assisting our community members to avoid necessitating public safety involvement in the first place. So this actually does fit. Snow, snow is a public safety issue. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And yeah. So it does fit. I don't even yeah. think it stretches what that says. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't say, yeah. it, I mean, it doesn't say only mental health. It, it's public safety. And that is snow public, removal yeah. is absolutely yeah. public safety. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm wondering if he can, um, I don't know, I mean, it's way premature because he's just been hired, but I'm wondering if he can figure out how to publicize what community, what responsibilities people have and why, you know, what, what, what Tracy said, I'm wondering if he is going to have anybody who does outreach about any yeah. topics. I so don't the website staffing is going to be. Yeah. So the website for this department indicates there's an implementation team, which involves various staff members, and they have different assignments to determine the scope of CRESS, relationship with police, fire, and EMS, identify calls directed to CRESS, uh, project number of CRESS responders and size of department, development, job description, or recruit applicants review communication protocols, develop outreach efforts, create training requirements for CREST staff to, and develop program details, including policies and procedures. So perhaps let's, I think this is a really great topic um, yeah. and perhaps we should Maybe just wait until um, he has more staff members. Yeah. And I think it would be a nice, you know, between CREST and the DEI director, I think this would could could be a really complimental complimentary um, discussion uh, regarding you know making sure our sidewalks are you know maintained throughout the year at, as a a public safety concern. Um, Is there a DEI director? Not yet. yet? Not yet. Uh, I think it's okay. it's in the. I'm not really, yeah, I think they're sort of finalizing that at this month. Okay. Um, DEI stands for? Diversity, diversity equity, and, equity, and, and inclusion. inclusion. Yep. Okay. Quick question. Um, yep. I, since we're on the sidewalk um, subject, does that also cover bus stops? Yes. Or is that a different thing? Because um, everybody's passing the buck on that too. And that so, is definitely a public safety. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, if there was yeah. a conversation that would definitely be part of it. Um, okay. And so I think that would be the responsibility of the town to maintain, maintain the bus stops and shelters. Um, I've sent so many the emails out. Or do uh, they think it's the PVTA's response? Yeah, they passed. Uh, yeah, that's Nobody. why I can't. I, I think some of the bus shelters are owned by PVTA or maybe... They purchase some of them and then uh, the town takes them over. I I'm not exactly too sure of who owned. So um, I was, yeah, I was at a meeting with Mindy Dom, like a community meeting and people brought up the issues and and she was actually gonna try to help. I mean, one of the oh, things good. sometimes is that the town says it's the PBTA's job, the PBTA right. says it's the town's job. So the TAC, we have yeah. a, a new member who joined a few months ago who works for UMass Transit and he said that when he's driving and he sees like a bus stop that really needs to be shoveled out, he contacts his um, UMass Transit right away to have it done. So he feels mm -hmm. like it's um, UMass Transit's PBTA's job. The one in front of Jones Library in the wintertime is never shoveled. Interesting. You know, who's, who's responsible for that one? You know. Um, that's a good question. We can look into that for sure. Yeah. Okay, so we should put that on as a bus stop maintenance. And, That'd um, be great. As, and maybe in the fall, we can ask, um, oh my God, I can't think of his name. That you, the you guy you just said. Uh, Earl Miller? Chris. Yeah, Earl Miller, I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, 
maybe we could have him come and see if there's anything we can work out with him as far as under, you know, his understanding of what, what the observations that we have are. So that, that would be good. And, and the fact that we don't, I mean, it would be good to have it not be punitive if we can avoid having it be punitive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we can so, certainly invite him to a, a yeah, meeting that, so you know, when he's available. Yeah. And I think the DEI person, I mean, he hasn't been hired yet, so it'll be months before we could get him or her here. But um, this committee is actually part of the purview of the person who is going to be doing direct diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. right. Um, we cover I, I have a um, question about the sidewalks. Had yeah. we checked how other towns are handling the sidewalks hmm. in winter time? You know, that might give us some, you know, some towns which have been successful in doing that. And uh, where I live, this is brought up by some people who have their houses and there's a sidewalk in front of it. Of it, it's expected of them to clean the sidewalks. And I remember reading a message from one of the homeowners in that area. He says, this used to be no problem, but as we are, me and my wife, as we are aging, we have difficulty doing that. So I wondered if there could be some system where they can just dial a number and they can send some crews to clean it and then be responsible for some payment for it or something like a minimal amount. But I'm curious to see how other towns are handling, especially in our area with similar kind of snow issues. Like Northampton, for example. I don't know that you're going to find a whole lot of happiness with finding that out, Sarah. I think there's a lot of people walking in the street because I think there's a lot of people who aren't cleaning up. I mean, even right. where my daughter lives in Watertown, she said sometimes where there's a lot of traffic, where, you know, on major streets, she's in the street. Right. They, so, I'm curious to see how Northampton is handling. They have a very active... Uh, disability uh, advisory committee. Mm -hmm. I, I can certainly um, go on the Northampton website and in and um, see how that's handled, or or give them a phone call. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, not a problem. I do. I if memory serves me, I believe they have the same uh policy as amherst does or a similar one that it is at the responsibility of the property owner uh, for the portion in front of their property the, for the sidewalk in front of their property that they should be maintaining it um and, and then if, if, there, if there is maybe for example uh, maureen they might get a variance from doing it because of their maybe the owner's disability or age or something like that yeah, that that's um, I, I I like that uh, you know so that would be in, you know informing the town that they have some sort of ailment uh, or some yeah. disability or age. I mean, so then and then you know when you talk about businesses, you know, or that that establishment's making an income, you then want to ask yourself, well, if you can't physically maintain it. Do you have a property management company maintaining your property, and can they maintain the sidewalk in front of your your establishment? Um, I mean, that might be different, obviously, for homeowners, um, depending on people's income level. Um, yeah. But um, I think that all those sort of factors um, should be considered. Yeah. I guess I just and want to also, say about the homeowners. Most of the homeowners are not sitting in their house all winter because they can't get out of their own driveway. They are hiring people to plow their driveways. If they can't do it themselves, I mean, people are not being shut-ins in $500,000 houses. Um, they're hiring people to clean their yep. driveways. My, uh, I, I, I uh, have a house with a driveway and I have people 
professionally employed, Correct. right? They will not get out of their truck and shovel my they, so they won't my they house. won't even they do won't it with a blower? It. No. They don't they won't no. maintain your walkways. No. They'll only plow your driveway. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. Even yeah, it takes too that's, much. That's it's a different your... set of equipment and it takes yes, it too is. much yes. time. Yes. But, you know, exactly. a lot of houses, like a lot of people have a snowblower that they used to use. And now I understand it, that you can't use it all anymore, but maybe that's what 12 year olds in the neighborhood are for. I don't know, but <laughs> that's an interesting question. Okay. So they're using, they won't get out of their truck. No. They'll only, they'll, so how does your, how does your, well, you don't need a front walk clean, but sure you do. I do. I do. And I have uh, people that help me personally, but it, it, not everybody because I'm disabled, you know, I have assistance. So they shovel it when there is okay. need, you know, yeah. and then, okay. you know, I have a, you know, my family also assists with that, but not everybody. I mean, I don't have a sidewalk that I'm responsible to clean, but it is challenging because I'm just telling you they have um, snow plowing guys who come and do it. And they just, because they have so many people, they have lined up. So they finish it in five, 10 minutes. They go to the next driveway, you know, it's yeah. that kind of thing. So they don't have time to do it individually. That's that's um, good, good to point. know. Um, okay. Unfortunately, good, uh, it's unfortunate, yeah. but that's good to know. Um, are there any okay. other DAC members that want to comment on this? No, I just know that there's a sidewalk on the opposite side of my street. It's not in front of my house. That isn't always, my neighbors aren't clearing. There's nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine aren't either. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Tracy. I have a, I have a oh, question. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I'm, I was surprised when we moved out here, they have sidewalk, the, the town has sidewalk cleaners, I'm assuming, yep. because I was surprised that, that we had one that came up our part of Main Street, you know, and, and we're, uh, heading up towards like Pelham Road up that way. But, um, you know, I was surprised because I had never seen that before. They certainly don't have that in Newton where we moved from, but they yeah. do have, um, I, don't, I don't know if it was the town or whatever, but I had commented to my husband, look, there's a little snow plow that goes up the sidewalk and yep. cleans off the sidewalk so you don't have to do that. So the so, town uh, does uh, maintain um, some of the sidewalks in downtown. They'll do a sort of uh, the first run of, of clearing the sidewalks. Um, and it, it is limited to just the main streets in downtown. Um, and then it's up to the property owner to maintain them after that. Um, but, you know, due to financial constraints I, I don't think most towns can afford sort of expanding those um maintenance um items um, and so that's why towns often will have in their bylaws that as a way to take the financial burden away from the town is to put it on the property owner for the portions of the sidewalk there in front of their home or business that they should maintain it and sort of and that's the way everyone chips in and you know provides uh, a service for the whole community if everyone yeah. chips in um with but I, I think it is it's a, it is a real issue because people in amherst certainly are getting older i mean we have a very large percentage of elderly people who live in amherst and you know i mean every time they want to do a two and a half override uh, that that becomes an issue for elderly people who are homeowners who are living on fixed incomes, you know, who, you know, and I've written letters to the editor saying, you know, you're going to lose this population. They're not going to be able to afford to live where yeah. they're living, where they've lived for many, many years. You know, if we keep doing two and a half overrides and their property taxes keep going up if they're on a fixed income. So I, I think some of these issues are not just related to people with disabilities, but also impact people who are elderly mm. so 
I think the town has some mechanisms for that. Um, that, I mean, I think there are ways that, um, I forget what they do, but there are ways that they can work with people to pay their taxes, even from the value of their homes. Yeah, but you know, I just have to say, my husband and I looked into that and with our social security stuff and a little bit of savings that we have, we didn't qualify for what they call as an uh, abatement or whatever. I mean, the, the town does have, um, you know, if you if you go onto the website, they do have mechanisms, but you know, it's it's very limiting in terms of what your income, uh, your annual income is, uh, given you you know what your social security benefit might be and whatever small pension you might have. Well, that's a whole other question that doesn't really have anything to do with this committee. But um, all right, um, have we? dealt with everything we have uh, there is another item on the agenda actually so yeah. I, I guess i have an announcement um which would be uh about the capital budget so um it looks like uh i i believe the town council still needs to formally vote on it um but i checked in the assisted listening devices for the bank center are still on that list and so is um uh auditing the um the flashing beacons the existing flashing beacons and replacing any ones that are you know broken oh. and um and also the ada improvement capital Id capital budget item is is also um being maintained so those are all really positive things Wait, what's the ada improvement capital uh for oh, facilities just, uh, yeah okay mm-hmm and the door was done through a grant. So that's not involved in the capital. Plan. Yeah, for the bank store. Yeah, so um, the planning department um, uh, was awarded a grant through the Mass Office oh, on Disabilities uh, to replace the door, the front door to the bank center. And um, there was a broken um, automatic door opener and the landing in front of the door needs right. to be reworked. Right. Um, as well, and the, and I then just signage. What we didn't do, which is the park lights. Oh you know yeah, where they're putting them. Yes. Yeah, so um, with the assistance of the planning department, the Amherst bid, Amherst Business Improvement District was awarded a grant uh, to um, place three parklets in downtown. And so a parklet, real quick, is a um, a sidewalk extension uh, extends the sidewalk further along and um, provides a space that is at the same level as the sidewalk and um, can provide a space for like a restaurant and so there could be um, chairs and tables and stuff for the um, for the parklet and uh, the parklet itself will be ADA accessible and so will the 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 transition from the adjacent sidewalk to the parklet um, will be ADA and then you know the placement of the tables and chairs will all have enough room and turn it turning radius for someone in a wheelchair and there'll be um, railings along the edge of the parklet with like concrete barriers um, at each um, end of the parklet. Oh so and a chair can't fall off into the street basically. Correct. Yep. Yeah, okay. And um, yeah, okay. so there's three parklets. One is going to be uh, built in front of Amherst Coffee, and the other two will be um, in front of Fresh Side on South Pleasant South Street, Pleasant. Yeah. and another one in front of Veracruzana, which is also on South Pleasant. And they'll take up about two parking spaces. Uh, I was each. saying what parklet was. That was going to be my question. <laughs> Say that again. Yep. Uh, oh. When I read the agenda, I was wondering what a parklet was. I didn't yeah. know what it was. It's sort of a so funny name because it's I know. Not a park. It, it's like a it's a new coins term um, that's been used. And so you've probably seen on the news, you know, you know, during this COVID era that we live in, is a lot of towns and cities have, you know, have provided these, you know, 
parklets, extended sidewalks to provide, you know, more outdoor, outdoor spaces um, for restaurant goers and stuff. And so, um, so this project is a pilot project, uh, if you will, um, as the town wants to explore uh, uh, looking at street state, streetscape designs of downtown um, and seeing, you know, this is just temporary. The parklet can be removed, you know, so sort of at any time. But, you know, the town wants to ex explore um, permanently, you know, extending the sidewalks so they're wider. Um, and, you know, what would that look like and what kind of amenities would folks want to see? And, you know, of course, we would want to make sure that everything's ADA compliant. But we'd also want to make sure, like, do folks want to have outdoor dining? Should we have more, you know, bike share stations or more benches or or um, uh, street trees? Um, so this is just to show an example of what an extended sidewalk could incorporate. Um, and so, um, what's it made of, Maureen? I didn't understand that it's temporary how could it be temporary well it, it's it's designed to you know hold the what you know withstand weather it, it's uh wood composite i believe um and so you know those materials can you know they're all going to be like screwed in and all that but you know eventually there oh. is a shelf life um of you know we hope the, the, these will be, you know, up for at least, you know, five plus years, but so it's not permanent. It's not us, concrete. Let's just put it that the way. The issue for us that I could see is people moving the tables off of the parklets to make more room um, and pushing them out into the sidewalk, um, which is, I think, why what they did in Northampton has those potted trees. Um, separate you know like they can't be moved so easily you know how they did that with the trees hmm. oh yeah the potted um, tree yeah yeah on string street yep. yeah yeah but not only there but even on main street there's a couple like one is near the um oh come on the um the middle eastern pita pockets um and the, i think because i can just see people moving the tables feeling mm -hmm. like they don't quite have enough space and there's not yep. going to be a, you know, it's going to be a flat surface connecting to the sidewalk. And I guess that's the question is you, there has to be some way to make a, make a boundary so that people aren't going to be confused about where the sidewalk is. Good idea. You know what I mean? Yeah, yes. no, it, it, the, uh, those are, I understand your concerns. So each of these restaurants mm -hmm. will have to submit like a floor plan showing where their tables and chairs will be located on the, on the parklet itself which is you know a, a platform and that they will agree that you know none of these tables or chairs will be relocated on the sidewalk the sidewalk will be maintained as a, a pedestrian route and will not be utilized mm -hmm. as outdoor dining a um, lot of places have chained their tables not to interrupt you but i've right. noted places that still have the outdoor dining they've chained their tables and chairs mm -hmm. so people can't move them. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Or take yeah. to do it. Okay. So, you know, golf, you know, if 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 that were to become an issue here in Amherst that people, you know, restaurants are tinkering with the location of the tables and chairs, you know, the town definitely strongly wants to maintain the the sidewalks as a pedestrian route. So, you know, if it comes to that, you know, the town could say, you're going to have to chain your tables and chairs, but uh, let's hope that that's not okay. where this is going to okay. go. Because that's um, the only thing I could see that would be a problem. What about Amherst I, Coffee? Last last year, there was a real problem with their tables and chairs. Is that going to be a problem again this year? So, you know, I, I think that the grant was inspired by, by uh -huh. Elise's complaint, to be honest. Um, and oh. so, um, um, and so the, yeah, so the sidewalk and, you know, the, the sidewalk in front of Amherst coffee will be maintained as a sidewalk. And then the, the right. sidewalk will extend out into the two parking spaces in front of Amherst coffee. And that's where the tables right. and chairs will be provided. And so that sidewalk will be maintained. And so okay. you don't have to go dip down and Good. into the road and dip back up. Right. Yay. No, 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 no
I have another question related to the Bang Center. Mm -hmm. I know just this last week, there was some uh, discussion about the problems with the Bang Center and needing a new senior center because the rooms that are in the Bang Center are often used for things other than what some of the groups use them for. So for example, I used to be belong to the arthritis exercise class and it was held in the pole room where now there is an exhibit. So, you know, it can't be used for that. So I know with the new, um, the new director of the Bang Center, there's, they're now raising the issue about, do we need another, you know, a new senior center because uh, this one's inadequate. Do you know if that's even been put on, on the table for the town to look at? So those that's a great question, Ruth. Uh, so Haley Bolton is the town's new senior service director. She started in January. And I know that her and the Council on Aging are, you know, discussing, you know, the need, you know, if the need for exploring whether a, a, a you know, a different location for a senior center um, could happen. I, I don't know where they are in that process, um, but I, I know that they're discussing it. Um, and um, so, as you all know, I'm part of, I'm helping Haley out with, uh, working with Haley with, uh, as the town is trying to become a designated as an age and dementia friendly community. And we'll be holding public forums and um, about various topics. And I will send out emails to you all about uh, about those public forums once um, once we finalize um, the fl flyers and and whatnot. Um, but I, I imagine that residents will uh, speak to that need. And so, if you go to one of these public forums, uh, you might want to. Um, vocalize that. Um, we did um, sent out surveys. I think we've almost got like a thousand surveys uh, responses. And I know that that was a hot, hot item that was expressed is for the need for a new senior center. So um, I think it will take time, just like everything else, like the Jones Library that took time to get to where it's at. Um, and so if, you know, the town is exploring whether a new senior center is needed, it, it's going to take time to get there and right, figure out where it could radar. be located and how to fund it and yada, yada, right. yada. But it's on the radar, which is Yeah, cool. it's certainly is on the radar. Back to the parklets. Do you know when they're going to be built? They're going to be built, um, I believe, uh, by the end of this month. Oh, cool. And I guess they didn't do any on Main Street because the slope of the street is too big and it has that extra little, it, you know, it has that extra little step thing anyway. So I guess Yeah, really there's definitely a back, big but... elevation change yeah. um, and along Main Street. Um, and so... Because um, they have a lot of places to eat there, but they don't have a parklet, so... Yeah. Uh, I guess it's topographical. But you know what? So as this is a pilot project, and folks say, ooh, that parklet in front of Amherst Coffee or Veracazana or Freshside, that looks super nice. Like, I, we would like to have that. And that's good information. You know, maybe maybe there's another grant to pay for another parklet next year, but it's good information of, oh, well, as we're thinking about streetscape designs and thinking about the width of the road and what we want, if we wanted to expand it or what have you, what, what would we like to see within that public right of way? Um, you know, maybe that's helping envision what our streetscape has is more, more spaces for those sorts of opportunities. Okay. And we, so we're losing six parking spaces. Um, <laughs> that's a whole other topic. And it's not ours to discuss. So, okay, <laughs> is is there um, anything else for this month? I did not get to the meeting minutes, unfortunately. Okay, we'll do them next month. The next meeting, I think, would be like June fourteenth. Is that right? Uh, yes. you're probably right. Let's yes, see here. That's right. June fourteenth is correct. Yes. Yep. 
Okay. Um, so I think Tracy I has her hand up. Tracy does. Oh, okay. Thank you, yeah. Tracy. So I had, hi, so I actually, I had a quick question on the parklets, but I know one of the issues with Amherst Coffee is also on the, um, the sidewalk, it's not really a si official sidewalk, but th the unofficial sidewalk that goes along all those businesses, you know, go berry and everything, that Amherst Coffee, a lot of times they like chain it off, they rope it off. So I was wondering if they're going to continue to do that, because it basically pushes everybody into the street. Um, so that's just a question. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is I had, I actually had raised my hand when you were still talking about the sidewalk. I mean, the um, sidewalk and snow is that I've been in touch with, and I know um, Myra may have gotten an update when we were attacked, but I've been in touch with Walk Boston about just the snow issues and sidewalks and Walk Boston, which even though they're called Walk Boston, they actually span statewide. And that's an issue that they're looking at at the state level. Um, because it's really complicated and um, it's hard to get um, sidewalks shoveled. And I've actually been interested in it for, um, and this is outside of Amherst, but it could impact Amherst too when we, where we have state roads is because like in Hadley, for example, from the Amherst Hadley line on University Drive out to Hampshire Mall, that they built this beautiful sidewalk a few years ago, but nobody removes the snow in the winter. So we've had the last three winters and nobody takes responsibility. It's one of these questions, like Elise said, where the town says mass, you know, the state is responsible and the state, the town, you know, so they yeah. keep passing the buck and property owners don't do it. And then even though you have the nice sidewalk, people are still wheelchairs, everybody is still in the street. So I'd really like to see that fixed. And, and also um, the state DOT, like through the other part of Hadley, like from the mall towards the bridge, they're also gonna be building sidewalks there. So it's a bigger okay. issue and this Matt, you know, Walk Boston is working on it. And it's, it's really challenging with the state because they can't find anybody to clear the sidewalks. And so anyway. Do you have Walk Boston coming to a TAC meeting anytime soon? You know, I've reached out to them. Um, we've been in touch, the, head, the chair of the Walk Boston board, like the volunteer board, she lives in Springfield and um, we've, the TAC has been in touch with her because they do a lot of walk off, um, walk audits and so on. The person who gave the presentation on the snow the last time I contacted her, for, she was on leave, like for a family situation. I'm gonna get back in touch with her, but I will let you know if um, they do come out really to us. That would be a cool thing for us to know about, for but all that, of us to know. But about. I know that the day I talked to her, I talked to her to follow up on the phone and that there were like the head of Walk Boston was meeting with the state on that. So, I mean, it continues to go every year. I know that every year I contact like Joe Comerford's office and they've been trying to make progress too on our particular sidewalk, the Hadley one, but um, it's really a statewide issue, so. Yep. Okay, so we're running out of time. Right. Thank um, you. So we'll see everyone on June on 14th. June. Yes. 14th. Okay. We'll be warm. Okay. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Bye everyone. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.